One thing managers rarely consider is how to create new leaders. We're so busy running our projects, making them successful, and making our teams work well together, we don't have time, we think, to create the leaders of the future. But actually, we do. If we take a couple of things into consideration, which I'm going to cover with you today, if you are a leader who wants to create new leaders, or someone who's a team member who wants the chance to become a leader, I want to talk to you today about how we can make that happen. And if you are one of those people, a leader who wants to create new leaders, or a team member who wants to become one, give me a thumbs up in the comments so I can see how many of you are out there. I suspect there are quite a few. So if you'd like to give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel, I'd love to hear from you. And I'd love to see you join the community of people who've already subscribed. Now, let's get into it. How leaders today can create leaders of the future. I'm gonna cover three things. One is as leaders, we need to understand what leaders do and what managers do. And that may be intuitive because we're already doing it, but sometimes you have to remember how you learned those things. Another thing is how to build skills. You know, learning to learn is a major component of any kind of leadership position because you're constantly learning and the leaders that are open to learning are the ones that are going to succeed. And the last one is share the art of servant leadership. And I think this is actually the most important of the three, and I'll get to that at the end of the video. I'm also gonna share with you my new playlist all about aspects of leadership and how to build them, because you know, one video is not gonna cover all the components, but I'm gonna tell you all about that and more coming up. What do managers do? I have a video on that, and I'll leave the link here about the details of what managers do on a day-to-day -day basis. But some of the things as leaders, we need to think about what managers do and how we learned to do those things. Let me give you some examples, but you probably have some others that you'd like to add. Planning and managing the project and what the team does. Oversight work, making sure that everyone has all the tools they need to do their job. Preparing for team meetings. Of course, answering team questions and addressing escalation issues and managing overall stakeholder expectations and requirements. These are just some of the things that project managers do. So if you're looking at a team lead who looks like a leader of the future, a new manager, then you're going to want to consider how many of these skills do they already have and what other skill gaps they need to learn. But what are the three things that leaders can do to help these new managers be ready for their job and succeed? Well, one, is invest in training. Training is the number one way that people can close the skill gap. When you're identifying the skill gap, you can think about what kinds of training or certifications will help that new leader close the skills gap. And the best way to do this is through formal training. Training that leads to certification is a great way to do that because it has a actual benchmark. You can tell whether that person has learned what they need to learn. Examples of this, PMI certification for project management, Google certification for project management, or if you're using Scrum or something else, there are great certifications out there. And in fact, I have a whole video on certifications and what they can do for you. So I'll link that here on this card. The next point is onboarding your new manager, whether it's someone who's been with you since the beginning of the project or someone you're hiring from the outside, you'll need to onboard them. Now I do have a video on onboarding and I'll put the card here and the links below in my description box. Either way, if you're managing someone brand new or someone who's been around, you're going to need to onboard them in terms of being a leader. The role of a team member is a little bit different in terms of how they read out, who they report to, what their input, throughput, and outputs are, what the expectation in terms of managing the outcome of the project, the end result, and how they address the stakeholders. Maybe they don't today, but as a leader of the team, they may. And they'll need to understand something more about communications as an example. I was a manager years ago when I was 21. I started at a company at like the lowest level you could and slowly worked my way up to director. And one of the things I always felt is that, do people see me as this new level or do they still see me as this young person coming in and working my way through the process? Resetting the onboarding helps you and your onboarded team member, your new leader of the future, see themselves in this new light, readjust. If someone's coming from the outside, it's much easier to see them as a manager because that's all the team's known them as. But if they're someone from within, it's nice to reset. So you've done the training, 
You've done the onboarding. Step three is to actually check in with the new manager. You've made them a new manager and now you need to check in. The coaching you did to get to new manager level doesn't stop. You don't want to encourage them through the process and then let them drop off a cliff because you basically say, okay, you're on your own now. No, have that be a gradual curve, right down to make sure their feet are well planted in their new position. So now I wanna to talk to people who want to be a new manager or are a new manager. First of all, let me start you off with a quote. Leadership and learning are indispensable to each other. They go hand in hand. So at this point in your life, if you want to be a new manager or are a new manager, you wanna become a sponge. You want to take in all the learning you can at this point in your life. This is the moment to really understand who you are, but also where your gaps are and what you need to learn. That might be what's called a hard skill, like the certification content I mentioned earlier, and also soft skills. And if you're wondering what soft skills are, they are the emotional intelligence skills, the ability to communicate well, manage others, and understand and have empathy for others. And if you wanna know more about soft skills, how to rate yourself, and how to find out where your weaknesses are, check out this video. Let me go through these five steps that I think are important for anyone who wants to become a new manager or is a new manager. First, if you don't know, ask. This is the moment to be that sponge I talked about. So ask questions. You don't wanna ask question on question on question, but ask questions. It's a combination of understanding the why, what, and how that will help you understand this process of how managers work. Step two is learn to listen well. And I don't mean just listen, I mean actively listen. And what does that mean? It means taking notes. I can't tell you the number of people I've mentored or taught to be managers on the job and they're sitting there listening attentively but making zero notes. Now, I'm gonna say that many people do have good memories, but you know what? When you're a sponge taking in lots of data from lots of different directions and lots of other information that is new to you, taking notes does two things. One, it's a proven fact that by writing something down for most people helps them remember it. And the other thing is you have a resource to go back to to look at later. That way when you're asking questions, you don't look like you're asking the same question over and over again because you wrote down the answer. Now, this may seem like writing on paper is not your thing. Okay, put a note in your phone, make them organized by topic, use your iPad and type along as your boss is talking. And if you can't make notes in the moment, maybe you're learning in the team room and you don't want to be seen to be taking notes, go back to a quiet place and take notes later. This is not word for word notes. These are the key points. So make it bullets if it works for you. The third point, build your communication skills. As a team member, you might have great communication skills with how you interact with others. But when you become a manager, you need to up your game. So understanding how to communicate, how to inspire others through that communication, and how to boil down a series of facts and issues into a summary statement. A summary statement about the problem and a summary statement about the options for a solution. That's really critical. Being able to boil down communications into its salient parts or the most important parts is a key component of being a manager or a leader. Four is know when to make a decision and when to wait. New managers often feel like every decision has to be made in the moment. You know, sometimes problems take care of themselves and you need to know when that's true. And that takes experience. So you can't beat yourself up if you're a new manager and you get it wrong sometimes. But having a feeling for when you should wait might be one of those conversations you wanna have when your manager checks in with you later. And point five, be a fast learner. Managers never wanna be the slowest learner on the team. You may not know everything. I certainly don't know the most about technical skills on the team, but when I need to learn something about technology, I need to try to learn it fast. How do you do that? One is to make a visual model, literally a sketch of a model, and that can help you understand things better. That can also include looking at a schematic or some detailed spec. Another might create a, another kind of visual, maybe a list of some kind, a list of actions, a list of steps, something like that. Still others might create a mind map, and the mind map can work very effectively at understanding how things fit in together and what the priorities are. And also, at the end of the day, there's just having a conversation and doing a feedback so that someone tells you something and you feed it back to them to make sure you've crystallized it in your brain. Your words may be different, but as long as the important points are there, you're good to go. 
These five steps can fast track you to being an effective and efficient manager. But to be a really great manager, you need one other key skill, and that's servant leadership. So now we're talking again to both the future manager and the leader today about how to create and how to share the art of servant leadership. First, let me share this quote from Harvard Business Review about what servant leadership is. Servant leaders view their key role as serving employees as they explore and grow, providing tangible and emotional support as they do. Servant leaders have the humility, courage, and insight to admit that they can benefit from the expertise of others who have less power than them. So let's boil that down. Servant leaders both need to be mentoring and fostering, supporting others, and learning from others, having the humility and courage to both share that they don't know everything, share their mistakes when they make them and be corrective about it, and also lead with humility, lead with the fundamental understanding that your job isn't to take responsibility for every success and blame someone else for every failure. It's in fact the opposite. You want to use the we when presenting a great situation that your team's in. We have done this. And by understanding that it truly is we that have done this on a project, you already step up your game. And that's how you'll gain authority and respect of your team. So that's it. And it may feel like a lot if you're a, either a leader trying to help new managers become new managers, or if you're a new manager. So I've put a playlist below to all the components I've talked about and I'll leave a link to my blog post so you can just print that out and use it as a starting point. And of course, update it, make it your own. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found value in it and I hope to see you next time on ProjectSkillsMentor.com. Bye bye everybody.